right. There he is. You know what? That's much clearer. Oh, All right. Good. How's the backdrop? It's 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 not as good, but we can hear and see you, and you can hear me. Okay, cool. Uh, before we get back into it, someone wants to know: Do you sell autographed pictures or autographed books? And if yes, how do they reach you about that? Mm, yes, I do. But um, yeah, um, a self-addressed stamp envelope. I think my address is out there for everyone. All right. And uh, his wife uh, is on Facebook. You can look her up. Uh, or actually, uh, you have a Instagram page. Yeah. Instagram. Message your Instagram page. I'm pretty bad at that, too. So. <laughs> or you can message me on my Facebook, Sally Abbott. Yeah, Sally Abbott. There you go. Now, you wanted to uh, talk about Don and Dan's Toxic Masculinity podcast. I think they got about 26. Oh, yeah, yeah they... I, I checked that out. I guess those guys, good for them. They're doing, um, what is it? Um, some woke broadcast, Toxic Masculinity or something like that. Um, the, uh, did he break his back? Don or did he? He's had several back surgeries. Uh, uh, I know he's got a lot of back problems. Yeah, yeah. The the broke back cowboy and um, it was a Dudley Do Right. Those guys are awesome. But no, seriously, I haven't I haven't seen it yet. But I I plan on it. I, I wish him the best. Someone wants to know what your best bench press is. The most I ever did was six twenty five. That's without drugs, steroids ever, by the way. Um, I have never, ever, ever taken steroids. I'm putting it out there for everyone to know. I will take a lie detector test for anybody out there that wants to pay for it. I will do it by someone that's accredited, legit guy. I will do it. Set it up. I have never, ever taken steroids. All you pussies that take steroids, I didn't. And I don't really mean it that way. I don't really care. But if you're going to fight me, I mean, you should be fair. You should be fair. That's not fair. Yeah, there's, there's ways to get around it in some of the federations. I've noticed some of those European federations don't seem to test at all. The, the one yeah, that yeah, I, in or whatever his name is. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, it's up to you, whatever, whatever you're into. You know, if you're competing in a sport or something, that's that, that's different. But if you're taking it for whatever reasons you want to take it for, good. But as far as me bench pressing over 600 pounds and everything else, I've always been strong since forever. It's just the way it is. Someone brings up here that they once saw you do a two or three plate upright row. Yeah, the most I've ever done with upright rows uh, was 365 pounds um, for fours. Um, didn't do them. I only did it one time. But, yeah, that was the most I ever did with those, yeah. And, like, I could do curls with 150-pound dumbbells. I could pretty much do, I got all natural strength. So it's not like I'm taking drugs and I'm working on certain muscles and they'll be strong. I've always been stronger than everyone. It's just the way it is. I'm lucky, I guess. I'm blessed, uh, fortunate, um, all of the above. But yes, a very, very strong man. Didn't your father recently die? He was a football coach or something. Did he kind of get you into lifting? Oh, yeah. My dad uh, passed away. Um, I just learned about it. Uh, we're not too close with my family and stuff like that, but I, I learned about it uh, not too long ago. Yeah, he was He's a great man. He's a great dad, actually. And uh, let that be known. Uh, my father was a football coach, and uh, football was his passion. 
and he lived it. You know, he coached high school football, played football forever. Um, my brother, who's five years my senior, whom I had big brother envy forever. Um, he was a football star and we were the football family, man. And, uh, then, uh, after my brother, he's five years older than I was, uh, after football, he went into wrestling and, uh, I was his little brother tag along five years as a junior. And he drugged me along into the wrestling room and the rest is history. I fell in love with wrestling and it was on. Why do you think WWE never picked you up after your WCW run? Because you were one of the most popular professional wrestlers in WCW around the time they closed. You know, um, that was a really crazy ass time in my life. I was, uh, I was a crazy ass son of a bitch, uh, racing down the rails of, uh, hell. <laughs> man i'm telling you the things i did and the things i've seen would blow your mind and uh i'm thinking about uh writing a book about uh walter fox maybe getting into professional wrestling and uh doing uh the crazy things and the crazy life that uh that he could um, i could imagine that went down but um uh, of course, it would all be fiction. Someone was asking earlier, what happened to your kidney and uh, liver? For, for the fans that don't know, uh, what exactly happened that you needed them replaced? Okay. Well, if you don't know, I'm pretty much the legendary party master, man. I was the biggest funaholic. You want to call me an alcoholic? Go ahead. But I think it was eighth grade summer. I remember getting some beers and I took a sip of that beer and got drunk as a skunk and said, Woohoo, this is for me. And the snowball started rolling and it got crazy out of control. And uh, next thing you know, not going to happen to me. Oh, yeah. Next thing you know, I was full-blown cirrhosis. Doesn't happen overnight. It happens, though. And uh, next thing you know, you're in uh, Cedar sinai Sinai Life, transplants, all the doctors. Oh, my God, Dr. Nissan, the head transplant guy, a liver guy, doctor, physician. Oh, my God, I can't talk enough about him. And there's one guy that I don't know. The Dr. Toto, the amazing Dr. Toto, awesome guy, great person, awesome doctor. Uh-oh, enough of that. Anyways, man, yes, so Cedars, I needed a liver because I partied too hard and didn't listen to anybody saying you're going to die, not me. I just put a stay on it. I'm so lucky and every day. Oh, my God. Woo-hoo, <laughs> man. Nope, I don't get angry anymore. Were you uh, just drinking from the time you got up, or was this something that you would just drink a di start a dinner and drink all oh. night, or how would you oh. consume? There is no such thing. Okay, let, let me explain to you how things evolve. And that is, you know, I party, 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 all the way up to college. Lo and behold, I going through college, I get a job at a liquor store. And so I was never in the need for booze. But anyways, the parties got bigger and crazier. Um, the next thing you know, you're dying. Um, and in fact, I can tell you, uh, after wrestling came to an end, I was dying. I knew I was dying. And it was clear as day. And it wasn't like I was uh, signing up to go more of that lifestyle. Not that it's a, cra it's a crazy lifestyle if you live it and you want to do it. I mean, trust me, no one partied harder or drank harder than me that is alive because uh, I should be dead. For four years ago, I was dead. 
You know, I shouldn't be around, but I'm lucky I pulled it off. But I partied way too hard. Needed a liver and a kidney also. Who would have been up there uh, towards your level in WCW? Because there's been a lot of uh, pretty heavy partiers in wrestling over the years. Bagwell is one of them that's still causing havoc uh, with some of his incidents. You know, um, to each his own. All those guys can do whatever they want to do. I, I kind of, uh, everybody just stays to their own beat. But uh, um, I trust you, me. Um, best way to explain, even the at the end of uh, wrestling, uh, is leaving Las Vegas. Um, but more on the level of... Uh, 10 times is crazy. Um, it was like, what the hell am I going to do now? Like Ben Saunderson, uh, the character that Nick Cage plays. Um, like, what the hell am I to do now? He goes, I guess I'm going to go to Vegas and drink myself to death. Well, I, I took the long route and I uh, did a lot of crazy. I'm telling you, listen, I know crazy people and crazy stories no one could hold a candle to me no one and i know i know there's people out there going oh yeah oh yeah i'm not in competition with anybody if you were man you're crazy too man i hope you're alive anyways but man you know, i'm a funaholic man i had so much fun what was interesting to me when I was over there visiting you was your your love of the Smiths and that when you were driving around looking for fights, you'd actually be listening to them, which is they're so, so relaxing. So I find that hilarious. Uh oh, juxtaposed or whatever. No, no, no. Uh, uh, the Smiths and violence. Um, not really. If you think about it, you're, you're like, oh love sick over an ex-girlfriend there could be some violence uh brewing somewhere somebody was mad at you or something like that you know what i'm saying but um hmm, i don't know the smiths i could get angry at the smiths it's, you know what i have never really been mad i guess i've been mad at people but everybody that i ever beat up and i beat up a lot of people Oh, yeah, I can already hear people. I used to be that guy on the other side of this interview. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> I don't care. Um, as a friend, once I heard say on a podcast, uh, that's so far That's so far in my rear view mirror. In my rear view mirror, I, I just don't. He said it much more eloquently than I did. But um, it's in my rear view mirror, man. It's I don't even go there anymore. Um but I forgot what I was talking about. Well, there's a fan on here that wants to know how you came oh, up Smith. with the, uh, oh yeah, the Smiths, yeah. So, you know, it's about being violent and everything and hurting people. It's not about that. Anybody that I beat up was trying to do the same thing to me. And um, I'm just a little bit better at it. Morrissey's coming to Vegas in July, somebody says. Oh, interesting. And the same I like, person. Uh, I like Morrissey. Yes. The same person wants to know about the over the shoulder flip move that you used to do in WCW. And why do you think nobody does that? It was such a cool move. I'm glad you uh, noticed that. It was actually uh, more of an amateur uh, move. And um, when I first got into the WCW, I didn't know what the hell I was getting into. And so. Um, so I kind of wanted to hold on to the reel. And uh, that's kind of a, a finish, a good way to finish a nice double leg is you, you clear the top that way so you don't have any problems. Um, and that's where it came from. I just kind of accentuated it. I'm kind of glad that you noticed that. That's cool. Thank you. Rye Black wants to know what are your current thoughts on Ken Shamrock? He's kind of dropped off the radar lately. He was an impact for a while doing that stuff with Joey Ryan, but that was the last week I saw of him. 
Yeah, you know, um, God knows what's up with that old Ken. I don't know. I, I've never really um, had anything to do with him. Um, he is what he is, I guess. I hope he's doing well. Um, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Good luck to him, whatever he is. I did try to suggest to Rick Bassman when he was doing his podcast on this channel that mm -hmm. – that he should have you on with Boss Rutin since Boss was part of the podcast, but for some reason oh. they never did that. Uh, you know, they 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 should have, could have. I guess he, he he him and the other little guy, what's his name, the little wrestler dude from Iowa, Pit or Pat 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 Miletic. Um, Yeah, I ran from that guy. Woohoo! And. Uh, I'm going to uh, broker a fight deal with Boss Rutten, and I'm going to throw out some contingencies. And uh, well, well, we're going to uh, talk price over a fight. If I wanted to fight you in an airport, I think I'd stomp your little ass. So if you're going to make up a story, make up a good one. Anything else you want to ask? <laughs> Someone wants you know to what? I, I, you be honest with you. I really don't care. What are you going to say? You, go ahead and say whatever you want to say. I, I'm just joking around about boss and all that kind of stuff. Well, now, now that you're uh, in front of your pool, I did hear a podcast with Dan Severin, who I interviewed both of you guys out in front of uh, your, that yeah. exact pool about a year or so ago. And he said uh, he had to hold himself back from throwing you in the pool. Oh, the the good-natured, mannered boy got irritated. I, yeah, he said I was um, arrogant. Right? Uh, I thought I was being nice. You know, what what is it? it is what it is? I I don't know. He was going to push me in the pool. He said, and I'll tell you what, Dudley do right. Um, no one's going to be pushing me in no pool, arrogant or not. And if you do, you better start running because when I get out, it's not going to be good for you. And I don't, it's, you know, I blow you one big crazy one. Even amateur wrestling, I think I could beat Dan Severin. Um, I know my wife's in the background going, oh, my God, competition, competition. He's like an old, you have to realize, these old heavyweights, these pre-steroid heavyweight guys are not athletic guys. They're like big bulldozers, and they would push themselves around the mat, and then that, there's not much going on. That's why I always wrestled 190. I could have wrestled heavy. They're big, slow, and they're not nowhere near as strong as I am heavyweights. And... Um, Toot, toot, toot. Anyways, I don't wrestle heavyweight, and that's what Dan Severn was, a heavyweight. And I had beat him three to two. That's right. <laughs> really? I, I did not know that. Yeah, well, yeah. They're not athletes. Those big, before those days, the heavyweights were big bulldozers, and they'd run into each other. And then they push each other around the map. They're not athletic people. That's why my whole team went crazy when they picked the Samoan in the first real UFC fight without the Gracie uh, twister matches going on. Everybody got bored over. And they put a, the first real fight on without any conflict of interest was me and the Matua. The Matua. And he did the Matua. <laughs> but he was... They, they, back in those days, they didn't pick who was going to fight and everything. They had a little ball. This was the first thing, like a lottery ball, and you pick balls and stuff. Anyways, they picked me and the Samoan to fight, and my whole table jumped up. Woo, this is going to be great. Why? Because they're unathletic, slow, and big, huge punching bags, and I'm 10 times the strength as they are. That's why. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm just joking around, people. Not really. There's a <laughs> fan on here that wants to know during your UFC fights, 
which one do you think you performed the best in and which loss pissed you off the most? As a, you know what? There's, why don't you talk about my record? You go, oh, I, said the reason. Oh, I don't want to hear excuses. Hey, excuses because you, you're a pussy. You, you would just take a loss, not me. All of my fights that I lost to, something was going on. Every single one of them. Uh, you did see the, the first show that I fought, and that was the only fight show that I really cared about. And that was, uh, did you see the uh, Macias winking and everything? It's pretty documented that Oleg fought some guy that did the job for him. And that it was all a big work. And big John McCarthy never, ever stopped a fight ever. Oh, whoa, the first fight ever he stopped was mine. Why he put us on our feet? Why do you do all that kind of stuff? And then you want to talk about tough. You want to talk about Dan Severin is tough. This is the first time ever in the world that anybody saw a guillotine. No one knew what submission was. No one knew arm locks or any of this kind of stuff. So the guillotine, uh, uh, Shamrock, uh, gets Severin in a guillotine. Watch that show. Go get UFC 6 and see how long that tough son of a bitch Dudley Do-Right fights that off that guillotine. He starts slapping that mat so fast, he looked like a fish on a wrestling mat. And then uh, that goes down. It's just, there's your tough guy. That's your Severin. That's your Dudley Do-Right. He's going to push me in the water. Do you think uh, Don Fry got his voice from drinking out of the horse water? Oh, probably. The broke back cowboy. I could see that. I, I hope he's doing good. I hope that show that that toxic masculinity. They could get like that, that that swimmer that you know that's competing like a woman. They could get that guy on and they or her, whatever she is, to interview her. A toxic masculinity. Doesn't that fit? Hey, I should be a booker for your show. Come on. <laughs> would you appear on their show if they had you on? I'm sure the fans would love to see that. Oh, I don't think they would know what to do. I broke back, might get out of the chair and attack me and then Dudley do right will be over there shaking his head, head back and forth with his arms crossed, going, Well, that doesn't make sense there. Well, I hope those boys don't do that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ryan wants to know if you think Don Fry was on the juice. I can pretty much guess your answer. I don't know, but look at that face. You know what? There's nothing. I, I, check this out. We all know that I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but like you got Arby's, like you think about that, right? Arby's, A R B Y, but it's actually R B, roast beef. Now, where was I going with that? What was I talking about before roast beef? Would Don Fry have taken steroids some of Oh, so so you got this Arby's, like roast beef, but you think it's Arby's, like the re restaurant. And so you got Don Fry, my wife, laughing at me. Please go back before Arby's again. What were we talking about? Arby's and what? Don Fry, steroids. Oh, steroids. Oh, so Royd had... You know, I never put two and two together whenever they're going, oh, right head, that guy's a right head. Well, do you realize that they're right heads? Look at all the 190 pounder class. Every one of that, everybody in that like heavyweight, that whole crew, except for the guy that dad sells pillows with the mohawk and the Japanese writing on his head. Um, they all look like they're on the gas, man. They're sauced up their head. They have that roid head look. Like, you know, whatever. I, I don't care. Who cares? Yeah. Many of the original UFC fighters and pride fighters were on it. So 
Yeah, and you know what? If, if you, I, I've never taken them. I've been around it, obviously, in the professional wrestling and professional athletics. I've seen it, and I don't know what the deal is, why you guys like to do them, and who does them, and you guys are all crazy out there who does them. I don't know. What, AC what wants to know you? how – Someone wants to know how ready were you when you fought Kimbo Slice? How much notice did you have for that one? I was ready for that fight. Um, it was, it was all good. Um, it was a, it was an all right fight. Uh, yeah, the the warrior fighter in me is not going to say, "Oh wow, he hit me in the back of the head," and I. That's what happened. I don't know what happened, but oh, that's not legal. Um, we did have a long meeting because of uh, the two street fighters and Showtime was all scared about it was going to be a negative situation and please play by the rules. So I was like, I'm just going to take him down. He can't hit me in the back of the head. He hit me in the back of the head. Who cares? He won. I don't care. But yeah, I was totally ready for that fight. Now, you were telling me on the phone about the, the last fight against the native guy that you weren't ready for and you don't think you should have been in the ring with or the cage that day. Uh, I was telling you about um, my uh, final hoorah uh, went with wrestling and I left. And then I uh, was just living, man. I was on my way to Vegas and drinking like a fish man i was going all over the world and doing all sorts of crazy dumb things and uh just whoa anyways um where was i at i got lost so your last your last fight that you shouldn't have had oh so uh i was pretty much new before i came back on my comeback after wrestling that I had cirrhosis and that I was going to die basically unless I got a transplant. And the writing was on the wall. I'm like, well, you got to live, man. You don't just lay around and go, oh, when's the death date coming? So oh, I was out there training and fighting and doing whatever I could. And I signed a deal with Dana to fight three fights. And I should have never, ever been out there. And then it went on and on and on. I should have never ever thing. My last three fights, I tried to fight Severn again out here in, in Phoenix. I couldn't pass the physical. And then my very last fight against Warpath, um, I was there at some Indian reservation where they don't do any medical on you. And I went there and I was pondering, what the hell am I gonna do? I'm, I'm, I can die in the ring and I said, well, I'm gonna die with my boots on, I'm a warrior, that's the way I'm gonna go out. And so that you, before a fight, you you have like a little dressing room area in the whole nine yards. And it was right next to the casino hotel. I walked upstairs into the room and I said to Paul Herrera, I said, hey man, I don't feel good. Come get me five minutes before the show. I walked, he came and got me five minutes for sure. I walked out of my room, walked right into the octagon, started fighting. And that was my, that was my swan song. Goodbye. And then I went home and died. And the doctors and donors brought me back. And here I am. Four years, four years, man. Yeah. Woo. And you're out of Huntington Beach, so you don't have to run into Tito anymore, although I don't think he lives there anymore. No, he doesn't live there anymore, I don't think. I think he moved to Florida or what have you. Ah, good luck to that guy, boy, right? He's right up there now in the, in the annals of the UFC history. He goes down with Joe Son. And uh, who's that other guy, that Mayhem Miller guy? Those three are the three musketeers of the UFC. Their families should be so proud. <laughs> Someone wants to know, were you afraid to fight Yoji Anjo? I'm not afraid of anybody alive. I don't care. But he's a tough man. 
Someone wants to know, did you ever fight in Japan? Yes, uh, yeah, Angie. Or, or what was it? Oh, yeah, I fought Anjo. Oh, that's the guy that you fought in Japan? Yeah. In UFCJ, the first time in Japan. I was the flagship of the show back in those days, baby. Back yeah, in the you day. were... Uh... How were you paid for friends compared to UFC? Did you make more money from that uh, TV show appearance than for real fighting? And they, I think they paid me scale. They really deal that uh, they were all excited. And mind you, I'm not about all of this. Let's go be famous stuff. And the guy that was like the COO of Semaphore at the time calls me up. He goes, hey, are you sitting down? I'm like, oh, what the hell is going on now? And he goes, you're going to be on Friends. And I'm like, okay, who's my friend? And he's like, no, you're, this is the biggest show out there. And I'm like, I don't know even what the hell that is. And uh, the most I ever watched on TV back in those days, if I wasn't in a bar, was the History Channel. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I met all these stars and everything. I didn't know who the hell they were. The only one that was really cool that went out of his way was that David Schrimmer guy. He was really cool. And Jennifer Aniston's hot. She's pretty cute. Back in those days. Did you ever have any more acting offers or you were just really focused on fighting in those days? No, I wasn't really focused on anything. Um, as far as uh, acting kind of stuff, I did some goofy ass stuff and Every time, I guess they, they have uh, something like, anyways, I always would look at myself outside of myself. There's a term for it. And just go, you look like a jackass. What the hell are you doing? And I did a, a, a few of those things. And then I said, no, 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 no. I don't need to do this kind of stuff. And then I got into professional wrestling where all you have to do is be yourself if you're good. Do you still keep in contact with anyone from pro wrestling? Not really. No, not really. But that's, you know, I don't really keep in contact with anybody from any part of my life back back in those days. I, I'm like a boat, man. I'm on to, down the river on to another lake. Someone's asking how you got the name Tank. Oh, boy. Fucking, uh, back in the day, pardon my French, um, back in the day, uh, I went to go to the UFC to fight, and the guy there was Art Davey, and he it's like, hey, this is a martial arts show. You need a black belt and all that kind of stuff. And I said, well, I've wrestled my whole life. I'm a wrestler, an American wrestler, and that's real fighting. Not real fighting, but that's real combat, you know, martial arts, American wrestling. He said, oh, too bad. We already got one. We got Dan Severn. I said, hey, listen, man, I just got out of jail beating somebody up i'm a street fighter man you know street fighting is i am a very technical wrestler and i'm a very technical boxer but when it comes to the street i can get down that's a whole different ball of wax and um so what were we saying before i got off my hand who knows where were we at if if you were friends with anyone uh, in, in wrestling Oh, yeah, but so, uh, no, I, I don't really talk to anybody from them. They're, but they are all cool people, man. They get it. It's not about uh, acting a certain way or being a certain thing. It's just making money and having fun. That's me, funaholic. Woohoo! <laughs> Joe wants to know, besides wrestling and boxing, is there any other styles that you trained in during your uh, martial arts days? Oh, absolutely. You, you, you have to be a fool if uh, you don't watch uh, uh, jiu-jitsu. I mean, like Gracie jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I mean, very effective stuff. Um, you better know what the hell you're doing. And uh, it's not a solve-all by any means, but um, it's definitely effective. And, uh, yes, I've rolled with some very world-class uh, jiu-jitsu players and um, any other questions? Have you been watching MMA at all lately? I have not. Um, 
I plan on it, but I never do. Um, just never works out for me. These what kids you, are tough, though, man. They get out there and do their thing. What do you think about the whole John Jones situation where he hasn't fought in years due to contract disputes? Mm, that's all business kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm the last person to talk about that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, if it's your passion and you should be able to find something that makes sense for everybody, right? I, I don't know. <laughs> Good luck to the guy, man. Whatever. Make as much money as you can. There's got to be a, a number where everybody's happy. Then there's a situation where you have Francis Naganu, who's technically the heavyweight champion, that his contract is running out, but he can make more money to have a boxing match with Tyson Fury as an exhibition boxing match. So he's saying yeah. he's, he's going to do that first. Do you think that's a wise uh, decision to go where the money is because the money doesn't seem to be in UFC? Um. Yeah, yeah, you know, like don't ask me about business. I, I, I'm, I'm sure they got it all handled. But um, I, but I'm old school, man. Handshake. But you know what? Very few, uh, very few um, people are like that anymore. So, kind of BYA. That, that's very true. James wants to know who was the hardest puncher you ever fought. Don't know about the hardest puncher because, you know, when you get caught, you don't, don't know, you know, you get caught. Um, I'll tell you, uh, Kimbo Slice was a strong son of a bitch. I'm always stronger than everybody, but I could feel his strength. Um, he was strong. That, that's all I got. You don't. You don't really don't know when someone hits you hard. You, you know, you, you get you get your head caught in a in a, in a, a choke or something. You get catching some shots. Oh well, that's the beauty of it, man. Fighting's fun, man. This is, this is the whole thing. It, it, oh, it's it's cool. It, it, it's 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 true. It's it's closest to being pure as you can get. Mike wants to know if you'd ever be a manager in pro wrestling if someone made you the offer, a company out there. Oh, I'd do anything. But, hey, you know what? I, I, no, I'm not going to go there. I had a great manager idea, but we would, it's not, I'm not going to, I misspoke. No, nah, no, nah, it would be fun. Anything's fun, man. Everything's great. Like you're talking about me, like in the Smiths, I, I like ICP, Michael Frante, anything, all across the spectrum. The Doors, Sex Pistols. Yeah, The Doors are probably my favorite. I listen to them every day. But someone had an ICP question earlier. They wanted to know if you still follow them and, and listen to them. I know you have the ICP uh, bike in your garage last time I was there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I rode that across the nation, around the whole thing. Uh, hot dog Cadillac. Ooh, those are the days. More to be had. Um, uh, yeah, ICP. Uh, so they, I got, I got all the jokers on my fairing up there, in the front there. Um, but yeah, no, ICP is is. I still listen to them. I'm a juggalo. My wife's a juggalette. Yeah. And uh, who's that cat? Uh, um, Greg Valentine. Uh, we got we had some scheduling um, problems. I was going to go on a show and, and talk with him about ICP or something. Uh, that, I'd like to see you do some sort of interview with ICP. Oh, uh, well, well, you never know. I enjoy a uh, violent J and Shaggy. Joe wants to know why your Ken Shamrock fight never happened since it seemed like you had a natural rivalry. 
Hmm. Once, maybe twice. Um, okay. But it seemed like he always had an excuse not to fight me. He hurt his hand with Brian Johnson, and then he tested positive for steroids, and then he couldn't make it for an eye thing. I, I'm always willing. You talk about, everybody talks about me not being in shape and all that kind of stuff. I'm always willing to show up and fight. Now, like Shamrock and all that, everything's got to be perfect for everything. Not me. I just show up and fight. And that's Shamrock. Is Shamrock. Someone's asking if you remember anything from when you passed away on the operating, ta operating table. Oh, yeah. What drove you to keep fighting? Uh, just me being me that kept me going to keep going. And, um, yeah, I was on the table. You see, once you get cirrhosis and then you get sick, sick. I went to the hospital after a while, after years of living crazy. The hospital, I couldn't take anymore. As a doctor, I went to a thing. She goes, you need to go to the hospital immediately or you're going to die. And I went there, and this Dr. Sonny turned me on to Cedars, and I'm alive. And that's all that matters. Someone wants to know who's tougher, in your opinion, Vitor or Maurice Smith? Well, um, I think it's pretty common knowledge that uh, Vitor is chemically induced and helped. So really to discuss any of his wins or losses to me is a moot point. Uh, he won against me. Uh, he uh, knocked, knocked me out. Uh, steroids had nothing to do with it. So he caught me. Oh, well. Um, so for him to fight Maurice Smith, I mean, it's just not really fair. Um, I can't even tell you uh, a winner like I would like to say, oh, probably Vitor, but how do you know what Vitor it really is? You can't. Ryan wants to know, do you think you could beat Data White in a boxing match? That's like a question. Uh, could I beat up Ronda Rousey? Um, what, what kind of point is that? Uh, sure. At one point, he had challenged Tito Ortiz or something to a box. Oh, match. that thing! I that that I've I've rolled with Tito, which he's supposed to be some fantastic wrestler for a long time. Um, he's not all that, and I know about his boxing. And Dana would take Tito's head off would just kill him. We well, also, there's a good was, quote. Did, did, I was going to say, didn't you just see what who, who, that thriller fight or thriller fight thing? That guy just knocked the hell out of Tito. That's probably what happened with Dana. Dana would do that to Tito. Yeah, was, that was the was end of his spider, boxing career. Yeah, the little spider guy. Yeah, I don't think he has any more Anderson. fights coming up. Yeah, so uh, yeah, he he he's you know he's Tito. It's for him. Tanner wants to know your opinion on Big Country Roy Nelson. Um, you know what? I've seen bits and pieces of him. I I, I don't know the man, uh, so um, I haven't seen enough of him. I don't know enough of him. <laughs> So he must be a killer, and uh, I think he looks great. <laughs> Did you have a favorite opponent somebody wants to know? Probably the Samoan, and only metaphorically because uh, he meant so much more to me. It, it was all more than a, a fight of who's better and who's worse. In my life, it meant something 
monumentous to me. It was like uh, the summit of the meaning of your life that happened on that day, July 14th, 1995. Apparently, you have the same birthday as Cain Velasquez. What do you think about all the controversy going on with him? It looks like he's going to be in prison for a while. And there's there's some people, like I believe Don Fry, for instance, thinks that uh, there should be no punishment for the uh, the shooting that he did. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, it's just terrible stuff. And you, you got to be out of your mind to think anything otherwise. I mean, it's just, you know, I wish the best of luck to the guy. Now, you said you don't really like talking about the business side of it, uh, but this guy wants to know your opinion on the controversy surrounding UFC fighter pay. Do you think it's warranted or is it misunderstood? Yeah, you know, I'm not so much into all of the pay stuff and all that kind of stuff. See, my paradigm or the way I think I come at this whole thing, and that is I my first show, I fought for $2,000. There was not like you're going to be, people are going to know who you are and oh my God. And then it was slowly evolved in this like thing of like it was a uh, fast track to become a star and all these idiots come out of the woodwork and pretending like they're tough guys. It was like a, a reincarnation of high school or something. All these bozos walking around like they're tough guys, like they're used car salesmen doing rap, uh, telling you how tough they are. And I, it's just like, I don't know. Now it's just like, so you want, that's the money we got paid, like $2,000. Now these guys are talking about millions of dollars and God bless them and woohoo. Great for you, man. Get it all you can, but it's hard for me to relate to. That's all. Not really about making money, but just, just the whole point of it all. I mean, it's more than making money or being famous. It's about a way of life for me anyways. Mike wants to know what your college record was in wrestling. Uh, I don't, I don't even know. To be honest with you. I don't know. I can tell you this. I, I, I had a bad day at the state tournament and I think I got fifth, but at every tournament picture that I had, throughout the year. Everyone that was above me, I beat. It just wasn't my day at that, that day. But whatever, it doesn't... It, it, things like that doesn't mean that much to me. I remember when we first see... The first time I fought Maurice Smith, uh, Blatnik was alive. And uh, I think it was in New Orleans or something like that. And Mind you, so there's, there's all these people that go out there, these dilettantes that fucking get into this fighting thing. And they, one thing is, well, everybody, these charlatans that act like they're warriors and everything like that, they turn coat and run to Japan and fight for pride and turn their back on contracts for the UFC people. And they left it a show there where no one was going to be able to watch and no one would fight because they didn't have any adequate time for anybody to fight Maurice Smith. Guess who said, hey, I don't care about that. Just say I didn't have any time Did you think to train. I just got off the bar stool and I walked in here. You think they said anything? No. Nope, 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 nope. Don't ever trust these guys, man. Anyways, that's the story of learning through life. There's people out there and bad people and whatever. That's what happened with the Marie uh, Smith fight. That's why I didn't show up in shape. Not, oh, look at him. He's out of shape. That's how I look. I don't take steroids. That's how I, that's how my body looks, bro. I mean, that's how it is. Did they ever put out an action figure of you? 
Uh, yes, uh, WCW did. Oh, Jack good. Pacific. Yeah, uh, that's probably got to be worth something now. It wasn't a. It wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't a UFC one. It was a wrestling one. Ark wants to know if you remember the very first fight you ever had in your life, in not including uh, sports. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, as a matter of fact. And um, I was my parents, mind you. Um, my brother's five years older than me. My brother, my sister's eight. So I was like a, a pet, you know, the latchkey kid. And uh, we lived in an apartment complex. My father just got back from college, and he was teaching down at a high school. And I was, we got in this fight with this another kid from the apartment complex. And I remember fighting, and we were getting down. We're just two little kids, and I remember getting his, my feet on his shoulder blades and ripping his hair out of his head. I'm getting crazy, and I ripped his face off his with my hands and the whole nine yards, and beat him up pretty good. And he he ran home, and God, we had to. I was before fourth grade, and I didn't see him for like two or three days, and then I saw him at school. And he was all beat up pretty good. That was my first fight. I had to bend. Hmm, nine, eight years old. Pretty good yeah. memory. Yeah, it sounds like it was a pretty brutal one as well. Yeah, for two little kids. I wonder what ever happened to the other kid. <laughs> I fucked him up. I mean, I messed him up pretty good. Yeah. Now, someone wants to know if you were still under contract when WCW went out of business. Yeah, certainly was. Um yeah, no, they 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 finished me out, and uh, I thought about calling W uh, W E, and man, I was crazy. And you asked me about did I party? Like I part. There was no such thing as a time or clocks or anything. I was very fortunate, and. Um, had a little bit of money stashed away and I was leaving Las Vegas and I went crazy, man, crazy. And so wrestling was over. And if I would have continued with WWE, God knows what would have happened. Probably would have died on the road somewhere. Dave would want to know who would win in a fight now between you and Butterbead. I think it's safe to say you would since he walks with a walker last I saw. It's, and I believe Don Fry has a cane too. So I'll tell you what, I'll do I'll do the job for either one of those guys. That's how much I care. Who cares? <laughs> I, I think that uh, you and Don Fry would still draw, to be perfectly honest with you. People would want to see that. To be honest with you, I beat the hell out of that old guy. He got lucky when he stepped on my foot. He's so lucky. Oh, my God. Hey, every dog has his day. Lance Arms Gone says, how long were you on the waiting list for your liver? Hmm. Not very. Um, I think, uh, not mind you, um, after Dr. Sani turned me on to uh, Sally, uh, after Dr. Uh, Sani, on my phone dying. Anyways, so uh, uh, Dr. Sonny from sent me to Cedars. I'm sorry, Devin, what was I talking about? How long you were on the waiting list for your liver? Oh, so you, you're, you're there and they say, they don't tell you this, but they go, okay, uh, come back in two weeks. Come back in this. And so I did that for a year, year and a half or so. And they're just waiting for you to die. Sally. And um, so there's waiting for you to die. This is going to die. Oh, and on the phone. Um, 
so they're waiting for you to die. So you keep on checking back into the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The hospital every couple of weeks. So I went in there and they said, they said, uh, you, they said, you're going to, um, moving anyway. So, um, you go in there and then you go, uh, guess what? You're not going home today. You're dying. And I guess I was in full kidney shutdown and they wheeled me over to the hospital and I was there for six days. And, um, I guess I got a, a kidney. I was basically on my deathbed. Um, and so next thing I know, I wake up like six weeks later from ICU pretty much in a, um, in a comatose state, I was chewing my mouth. I guess I had multiple strokes, five plus more, and you know, I was lucky to be alive. I died. And so I guess I was on the list for six days. And how old were you at that time? Well, four years ago, um, 52, I think. So Very, 57 uh, now, so whatever, was it 53, 54, what, 52, 52 or 53, something like that. Michael so, Collins uh, is wondering if your current state of residence, Arizona, is good for you health-wise. Oh, absolutely. I love it out here. You know, I grew up in Huntington Beach, basically on the water, not on the water, but on the beach, but Ocean, ocean, ocean. And uh, I moved out here to an ocean of saguaros. I love it out here in the desert. You've been out here. It's awesome. Yeah, you're literally, you have to take dirt roads to get to your house. And yes. you're, no one's going to bother you there. No, I love it here. Me and my dogs. And my you never dogs. had kids, did you? Someone's asking uh, if there's going to be another generation of you in the business. No, I um, like to pride myself on being responsible. And uh, I was under the uh, impression that I wasn't really responsible enough or in my life to bring a child into that kind of situation. So I chose not to. And so I am childless. Someone's asking, was it hard for you to stop drinking? A lot of people can never stop. That's a true statement. And you want to know what? Um, no, it wasn't hard for me to stop drinking. Um, I just had to know that it was going to kill me. And of course, nothing's going to kill me. And um, once I found that out, I just put it down. I can't, I can, I can stop drinking anytime. I, I'm, I'm a funaholic. I'm not, I'm not a slave to alcohol. Someone's asking if you believe in God. I don't know if um, I want to call it God, but I died and I went somewhere. I wasn't, I wasn't gone. My conscience was still there. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to take it or what have you, but just because you're leaving this body doesn't mean you're gone. Uh, does that mean there's God? You know what? I'm an agnostic. I'll find out when I get there. What would be your best advice for someone getting into MMA today? It's so much different than when you started. There's a lot more money in it and a lot more jobs too. Yeah, well, if uh, that's what you want to do, uh, fine. But I don't, I, you know, it's kind of funny. You're looking for money? Are you looking to be famous? Are you looking to do whatever? And, that never entered my mind. It was never ever even something to think about. I, I so like, you're, oh, should I do it for money? It's like saying, do you want to be an attorney or you want to be a policeman? I mean, I don't know. It's a different way of looking at things. I'm 
just call me an old man. What do you think you would have done if you didn't get into fighting? I know you were studying history in college. Well, probably, I probably would have got around to going to law school. Although I was hell bent on being a, a teenager and I hell raising a non grown up as long as I could. And I made it to 52 ish. So there I am. I got to stay on my death. I wake up every morning and everybody should do it and just go, oh my God, no matter how bad things get, trust me, I know how bad things can get. And just go, oh my God, it's so great to be here. You don't know, man, till you almost lose it. You could have everything you want, but you would give it up just for these extra four years and knowing that I got them every day you wake up and you go, Whoa, I'm awake. I can't believe it. Yeah. I never did that before. I do it. I do it now. I noticed Mark Coleman was congratulating you on your four years since transplants. What do you think of him being sober for about a year now? Uh, good luck to him, man. You know, alcohol, Come on, alcohol is a great time. It can screw your life up. It can kill you. But, man, it's a great time. Man, if you can manage it well and it doesn't screw your life up, have at it. I, I try to be responsible. I try to do the right things. I didn't have children. I have, I have stepchildren that I love, and that, that's good enough for me. I, I, you know, I... I don't need that kind of stuff. Have you been following at all the going on with uh, Sonny, former WWE manager? You might have known her from WCW. That the I, I, I don't know her, but man, alcohol, once again, I can, you get in with someone that's, bound to be irresponsible it just accentuates and it takes away your inhibitions for being responsible using an irresponsible person and god oh my god I, you know i have no sympathy for that woman it makes me sick it turns my stomach i guess she was in wcw before you yeah i don't i don't have anything to do with her but Alcohol is insidious disease, and man, it's not for the irresponsible. And you know, for the irresponsible that take down their families and all the other stuff with them, it's bad. But you know, it's like a it's like a gun issue. You you can't throw guns away because some crazy person went and shot everything, and you can't you can't get rid of alcohol or call all alcohol bad. Because, man, it, it supplied me with one of the craziest lives I've ever seen. I've seen, but trust me. I'm going to write a book about it, Walter Fox, a funaholic. Something about uh, him uh, getting, uh, I think I'm going to start with Walter Fox getting the final uh, realization that wrestling is coming to an end. And it's funaholic is just beginning. I used to, man, I, I used to stay at hotels up and down Sunset Boulevard and all the trappings, all the crazy stuff. Oh, my Lord. Woo! <laughs> There's a fan out here that wants to know what was the biggest MMA payday you ever had, which you might not want to say. I do believe you made more money with WCW overall. Yeah, wrestling is good. Um, I did all right with um, fighting. Um, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter how much money I make. I'll be comfortable for the rest of my life. I'm supposed to bake it with uh, transplants and everything, especially if you have two to 101 years old. 
Yeah. Well, that's Billy why, Graham that's, is still that's, going that's, with his liver transplant. I was going to say, that's why the waiting list is so hard to get on. You get that many more years. Well, I hope that you, <laughs> you make that many more years. You did marry your, your wife's much younger, isn't she? Sally, isn't she? Oh, I'm daughters? not going to give her secret away, but she's a. Uh, uh, she said you're awesome, but um, she's a year older or a month older than me. That's the truth. That is the truth. Philip wants to know if you idolized any wrestlers or fighters growing up. Ah, uh, believe it or not, you want to have like a game? Who would you think I would be as a boxer? Who do you think, like during like the Tyson era, uh, what kind of boxer do you think I would like? Just from out out there. George Foreman, maybe. Yeah, you nailed it right on that. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a hard one. No, oh, I loved it, George. I got Never a funny-ass story. I have a funny-ass story way before I was taken. Oh, no. About George. Thank God. There, thank God things come and save me. But I'm telling you, um, I go to watch, I was into boxing, man, and I, I I couldn't box my whole life. My mom was like, no way. You need brain problems and all that kind of stuff. You're not doing it. And of course, I have respect for my parents and everything else. Of course, I listened to my mother. I turned 18. I got in a bad car accident. My 19th birthday, I got my teeth knocked out. Got my knee banged up really bad. Wrestling was kind of coming to an end, and I needed the combat. I had the thirst for it, and so I went to the boxing gym. I went up. I went up to San Luis Obispo area, and I boxed with this guy who was a. His father is a very famous '70s boxer, not his father, but his cousin something relative. He had eight pro fights. I never put boxing gloves on before. Got in the ring and I boxed him up pretty good. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just went in there and boxed. This guy had eight fights. Knocked the snot out of him. Got it on videotape so I'm not making stories up. And said, I got to do this. And everybody back in the day, every tough guy back in the day, I'm going to beat up Mike Tyson. And I was gung-ho to go beat up Mike Tyson. So I went to the Westminster box. Went in there. Tyrell Biggs is in there banging away with Matt Kirahara. I'm just some white kid, don't know nothing. Said, I want to start boxing. Matt Kirahara said, let's do it. Had my first fight within six weeks. Noe Cruz took over. Mexican trained. Carlos Palomino showed me how to throw punches, and there I was, boxing away. That's how my boxing started. Cool story. So you still have that videotape. Yep. And I got one of Don Fry stepping on my foot when I had him on Queer Street. They were going to do a movie with me. And so I had, I had a little bit of pullback in those days, believe it or not. The main dog. And I said, hey, I need this movie company shooting this. And I said, okay, whatever, as long as they don't put it out there. So I have that. And um, et cetera. That would be great to get on digi digital and throw it out there someday. Yeah, I have so much stuff. I like a big trash bag full of stuff. It, it, I don't even care about this stuff any really more. Everybody just makes up their own stories about what goes down. It's nuts. Well, now those gym boxing videos are really popular on YouTube. Yeah. So, well, I, you know, so I started boxing and then uh, Ultimate Fighting came along. 
And there it was. I was, I used to cry, like, not really cry, but like whine, like, why this boxing bullshit is bullshit, man. I need a real fight. And I used to say back in the day, I go, you guys, this boxing gym is just full of bunch of pussies. I go, if a, a van full of wrestlers came in here and said, let's fight, you'd all run to the payphone and call the cops. I go, now, if you all you boxers got in the van and drove to the wrestling room and said, let's fight, all the wrestlers would take you down and start fighting. That's the difference in mentalities. Um, and that's what was going down. And so I went out and had my amateur boxing matches. And I was into George Foreman. And I went out there to watch him fight. And then I was crazier and a shit house rat and drunker and shit. And um, there with a friend. And we saw George walking out of a, of a, a lobby at a hotel. And I was like starstruck. It's like, man, that guy's my idol. And the night went on. It was Tuesday night fights or something. Sean O'Grady and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Anyways, we ended up going to some Zeldas or something. I don't know if it's still there or not. This is decades ago. Getting drunk or skunks. And we wanted to go find George Foreman. Drunker and shit. And I got pulled over. I was going to tackle him. He would have beat the holy hell out of me and my son. He would have just smoked us. <laughs> Anyways, fate intervened and I got a DUI. I woke up the next day and thanked them. everything that moved. <laughs> that would have been it would have been great getting my ass kicked by George Foreman. Uh, funny as fuck. Yeah, something to talk about for sure. Oh, oh yeah. Someone wants to know about your knockout of cabbage. How did that feel? That memorable KO. Yeah, you know, you, you know the cabbage story here. It, another thing, and you call them excuses, I call them reasons. He cut my forehead with a with a knee, but he had a training tape of me. And he knew that I was going to bob and weave. So he, he had a little heads up. He had a tape of me that was real fresh that he got through the UFC. I don't know who gave it to him, and I really don't care. But he split my forehead open, and they were putting some kind of adrenaline stuff to stop the bleeding. And he said, you okay? Can you see? And I said, no, you got shit in my eye, you know, like get the gook out of it. And Big John McCarthy just looking for any excuse. He's not my fan. He's, oh, that's it. Stop the fight. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You said you couldn't see. I go, oh, my God. Everybody saw the fiasco that happened after what John Marsh got and threw a water bottle at him, etc. Anyway, so then they, I guess they thought I was, as an easy mark and they were going to take me over to Hawaii and beat me up on the rock. And we all saw the punch and, you know, I kind of worked on that punch, not like on purpose, but like I would go with the punch mitts and Tyrone Bennett, my trainer would walk away or I'd walk away and I'd get tired and then I'd turn around and crack them and I'd call it my cocktail punch. And that's what he got. The cocktail punch. And that son of a bitch broke my hand. I want medical payments for that. <laughs> yeah, there's no pension plan for uh, fighters or extended medical coverage past the day of fights, is there? No, no. That's all right, though. Got to do what you got to do, man. You can't cry about it. Oh, I got two thousand dollars for my first show. Are you kidding me? Like two thousand dollars, I fought three times. It was the best night of my life. Man, it was great. Talk about everything that you could ever think of, and what a great feeling it was. Las Barillas, dos mil. Ah. 
Someone wanted to know if you think any of the fighters today could have made it back in the, the old school days of no weight classes and fighting three times a night. Well, okay. Um, uh, who's a Mr. Natural guy? Uh, whatever. Well, that Randy Couture kid. Uh, yeah. Guy, yeah. Then he think that he was a heavyweight and try to fight Brock Lesnar? Yeah, and it didn't work out too well for him. Right. So anybody under 200 pounds really shouldn't fight in a tournament. Um, so there you go. You get rid of just about everybody except for the heavyweights. Uh, an average good heavyweight will beat anybody. That's why they have weight classes. I mean, it's not a secret. I mean, everybody gets all these like fights uh, through proxy by proxy. You know, if you're a little guy, you can be into all the little guys, and if you're a right head, you can be into the right head guys. And if you're like the street fighter, hell raising guy, you can be into me or whatever, which is not really who I am, but you can act like I'm that way. I'll be that way for you. <laughs> whatever. Um, just It is what it is. I'm guessing the answer is probably no, but Mr. Raccoon wants to know, did anyone try to rib you in WCW? He probably did, and I uh, didn't know it. That's how smart I am. <laughs> did you pay, I, I, did you you pay know, I, the I, Nitro I, Girls, uh, by the way? Oh, let me see. I didn't do anybody. And um, look at me. I'm not exactly the cutest guy in the world, but don't leave your girlfriend around me because I do have a little bit of game. Believe it or not. Huh. <laughs> yeah, give us some tips. I, I'm always looking for tips because now I'm single. Uh, oh, you want some tips? I can yeah. tell you the number one deal that'll get you the women. And that's don't act like me. And you'll be all set. Paid programming <laughs> wants to know, have you watched any good movies and what's your favorite movie? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Are you? Oh. All right. Yeah, I realize it's been decades, but I am notorious for partying hard. And um, yes. What was the question again? Movies. movies. Yeah. Yes, I, I start getting into that party scene. And the movies that are definitely on my list are Leaving Las Vegas and Barfly. I've lived Barfly. I know Barfly. I've lived Leaving Las Vegas. I've done both of them. And let me tell you something. Uh, they're realistic movies crazy and like i was telling you crazy i i wouldn't live by time i would just get drunk pass out go to sleep eat i didn't care what time it said on the clock i i just was when i was awake and conscious i was partying it didn't matter if it was three in the morning or three in the afternoon that's how i was rolling and is it bad that I still think that sounds fun? Oh, it's fun as you can imagine. It was like, it was like, what time is it? It was like, I don't know. It, it, forever. And then to accentuate it, it was like, oh, shit, let's go to Costa Rica. Oh, shit, let's go to Mexico. I used to go uh, down to this place, a fishing village, and see a Cortez by myself all the time. Drink uh, Pacific Coast, go fishing. Just chill. It's a great time down there. 
Now, I know your answer is going to be yes, but this guy wants to know, would you have won the WWE Brawl for All? Well, you know the answer, sure. I'm, anybody that's a fighter is always going to win. If, you, if, if, if you're a fighter, he's sitting there, oh, well, I might be able to kick my ass, or oh, well, I might lose there. And you're not a fighter. Give it up. Go swim. Yeah. Do you think they made a mistake there after, like, Bart Gunn destroyed all of the wrestling competition to put him in there against Butterbean? And oh, much- yeah. That, 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 that was it. was supposed to be you, wasn't it? You were in consideration. Yeah. Uh, they, they were all talking about all sorts of things. And, um, Nothing ever panned out. I was talking to them, uh, Bruce Pritchard and the JR guy and all them. And um, I don't know. Uh, if you, you get the, uh, the book, Walter Fox, uh, after he fights in this NHB show, he goes to some professional wrestling show they had back at Happening Beach. And uh, there was an organization there that started the ball rolling. So he always kind of uh, had some loyalty to them. And so when he was talking with the W or not him, but when I was talking to the WWE, I already kind of had some strong feelings, not that couldn't be overcome by money, but some loyalty first meeting things with Eric Bischoff. And that's what I went with. And uh, Eric is a, was a stand-up guy all the way across the board for everything he said. Philip Thornton wants to know, how were your interactions with Ric Flair and WCW? Ric Flair is a cool guy. He did his thing. And everybody in uh, the business did their own thing. And I don't have a bad word to say about anybody in wrestling except for the other two that I had to, but you want to know what? Cause I'm working on myself. You always got to tune yourself up and ask yourself what makes you tick and stuff like that. So, you know, I, 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 I put myself in Lex Liger's shoes and uh, I can see myself uh, shooting from where he shot from. So I, I kind of rescind my bad feelings for him. And uh, Terry Taylor, he's just a dick. <laughs> you know what? I always say uh, there's a special place. And uh, I got like a memory like an elephant. And someday timing will happen. I will meet you. And we will have a conversation. And I've had conversations with people before. It's funny, they never Taylor, a lot of people don't like him, and I don't know, I don't think he's ever really he's just a great politician. He always gets positions in companies. And I I understand the whole the whole back thing, but he maliciously did things to, to screw me over. And when you do that, I maliciously do things to screw you over. And uh, I'm not dead yet. So someone find out when Terry Taylor does another autograph signing and invite Tank to it and have the cameras ready. Ah, Las Barillas. It's all timing, man. Timing. Now, someone earlier was asking about Rick Steiner. Would you have beat him in a legitimate MMA fight had it happened? We all know the, the answers. You know, I'm going to beat everybody, but uh, Rick's a tough guy. Both the Steiners are tough guys. And, you know, I throw uh, compliments around like manhole covers. Everybody in wrestling is, is a tough guy. That doesn't mean they're skilled fighters or anything like that, but they're, for the most part, tough men. 
Well, let, let me end it on this question then, because this is topical. They just made CM Punk the AEW champion. Do you think it's good to make the guy the face of your company who didn't even land one strike in his MMA fights? Or does it matter? Uh, I, You know what? I think um, it doesn't really matter. And so here's the deal. Well, no, no, no one ever really thought that CM Punk was a tough guy to begin with. I, I never thought that. I was kind of shocked that he went out and tried it. But so what does it, you know, it doesn't really, I don't know. That's why those guys get paid the money to figure it out. I think they're paying him between three and five million is the rumor, but I, I even think after your transplants, he wouldn't stand a chance against you. In a, no, I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm physically getting back. And um, like I said, I, I, I grew up a five years junior of uh, my brother, so I know how to behave. I just sit back and be quiet. And, you know, I got, I got dinged up pretty good. It's like a truck ran me over. So I know to sit back and just be quiet and uh, I just let people say their stuff and do their thing. That's all. And that's all that CM Punk's doing. He's doing his thing and good luck to him. Chris has a good question here about how many bar fights have you been in? I've, I've been attacked in bars at least 200 times from bouncing. So I imagine it's got to be more than that. I would be, I would guesstimate that um you know i i sit back and i don't really consider fighting before i was 16 a fight i mean once you get up and driving around then you start to see the uh see the world and then you start fighting grown-up people and i would say during that time i was breaking down altercations everywhere and Hundreds is easy to say. And I've beat, beaten opponents one inch from life to let them go with a slap, depending on where they want to take it. I'm telling you, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I, just don't, I just don't get it. Very good. Now, we talked earlier, you put out a couple books. Where are they available if people want to order them? Okay, it's on Amazon Books. There's three of them. They're all done now. It's a story of this guy named Walter Fox that uh, was graduating from college, didn't know what the hell he was going to do, ended up getting in an altercation that changed his life. And before you know it, it's the end of the book. And he just got done fighting in a no holds barred fighting show, something they never had seen before in their life. And uh, it ends with him signing a contract and being on TV. So fans can look that up on Amazon and to get be, it's be, it's before there were rules on Amazon.com books. If you're not you're not in the reading, I, I wrote a 900 plus page novel. Not even reading the whole thing. The last book sums it all up. It's, it's a good start off. And if you like Walter, you can go back and see where he came from. And you do have an Instagram page, which I believe your wife helps you run. Right that is uh, Tank Dot Abbott for people that want to look that up, and I'll even put it up on the screen in a second here. And she posts pictures pretty regularly of you on there. Yeah, sometimes. It depends on the mood, you know. Um, I was trying to think about uh, content. Uh, anyways, yeah, so um, what the hell was I thinking about? I don't know. Yeah, so Sally does all those things. And uh, now there's my page. Yeah, Sally helps me. What's that about Shale Sonin on there? 
Well, he did a uh, thing on my books, and um, so I put it on there. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, lo- yeah, a little uh, story about Chael. Um, seems uh, back in the day on my second show, I lived in Orem, Utah, and I trained with Mark Schultz, the world champion wrestler, for five weeks. And uh, Chael Sonnen was a wrestler on his team. And small world that it is, uh, we known each other since way back then. And uh, he ended up checking my books out and did a little review on them. I'm going to have to check that out for sure. He ha- he has a really good YouTube channel and he's been in, he's been attacked recently or something at a, at a hotel. And now he has to deal with a legal situation. out of Yeah. It. That, that kind of stuff is just ridiculous. All, all that kind of stuff used to be squashed and settled and done with way back when. And then now we, we produce this offspring of pussies. <laughs> It's it's terrible. I mean, it sounds stupid, but if you're if you're a famous fighter now, you you kind of need bodyguards just to protect yourself from the people that are going to try and sue you. Absolute true statement, and, and you know, I I have uh, empathy for Chael. And I have empathy for Chael, and it's it's a terrible scene, just like that Mike Tyson thing on the airplane. Luckily, it sounds like that's going to turn out in Mike Tyson's favor because that guy had a criminal history, and it's oh yeah, and then and then they think that they got legal on their side. It's just terrible. I, I stay in your lane. I stay in my lane. Do whatever you want to do. Live and let live, man. I don't care. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, who, whoever, like, it doesn't matter if you know fighting or not. Mike Tyson is one of the most famous people in the world. You would think the airline stewardesses would pay closer attention to him when, when he's on their plane, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. And then, you know, like, that guy's going to walk off and talk like he's a tough guy. Everybody has their narrative about um, what they did. I, I got bozos that, that – uh, that talk about stupid ass stuff that didn't even exist. And even if it did, they twist it into their own little stupid stories. And I feel for sorry, sorry for my kids. It's, it's bad. These people yeah. are crazy. People love twisting stories around. And the sad part is most people will just believe whatever they hear, but it's all good. As long as they're talking about us, right? Yeah, you never know. Exactly right. And, um, you know, I just, people don't bother me. You know how many fools that have come up and said stuff? No one has ever uh, gotten off on me, trust me. All these fools that say they say things about to me, about me, or whatever, it's all words. So who cares? I don't. I noticed Dave Meltzer never really has much positive to say about you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you this. It's weird that you brought it up because he says that he seen me kissing another guy, and I've heard him say that. That's exactly why I was bringing it up, but I didn't. And want I'm gonna it. tell you, it might be true, and I really don't care. I'm not homosexual. Or I'm not homophobic either but um i usually don't kiss and tell but it was him the guy that that he saw me kissing he had his eyes open and we it was him that he saw me kissing Well, many people uh, would definitely believe that because <laughs> he hey, might... who cares? And you know what? I, I've 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 kissed uh, guys. I don't care. It's I'm it's kidding. Pride I... Month. It's Pride Month. Why can you? Why shouldn't you be able to say it? But Woo-hoo, go out there and do your thing, gay guys. I don't care. Gee. <laughs> 
But what I don't like about the only thing I have a problem with is the gay people is they act like people are only hating on them, but they hate on any celebrities that post pictures with. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You post a picture with Sally. I'm sure there's people hating. Why is she with you? Blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, oh, the haters are out there. Hey, guess what, haters? I hope you're doing better than me. But I don't think so. <laughs> And I don't care. And there is a thing in fighting that not many people talk about, but a lot of MMA fighters are actual bisexual. You probably know about it too, right? No, that's the first time I heard it. Oh, you didn't know about that? No, shit. I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I won't get into it, but there's a whole, there's a whole thing uh, that we won't get into on this podcast because YouTube uh, is hey, good night. But I'll let you close this off with whatever you want to say. He has a battle going on with Mercedes right now. Yeah. Go to the start of this if you want to hear about that. Yeah, hey, Mercedes and um, whatever. I mean, they try to sell me a lemon in my view. And um, like I said, I've I've been a proud honor of Mercedes since 1999. Hell, I got I got I got three cars, three of them in my garage right now. And Fletcher Jones of Newport, it seems, pulled a fast one. And oh, there's another thing. Fletcher Jones is Las Vegas. Excellent professional uh, on. Uh, Great company, ran like a professional company, unlike uh, Newport. There was some guy there that he's like a named after some actor and wearing some cheap suit. Uh, just that that typifies uh, Newport La, uh, Mercedes. Uh, Fletcher Jones was that guy. Anyways, they, in my view, they tried to rip me off, and all I wanted was. And all I do want is my money back. And I, I, I even wanted to, I was going to buy like a Sprinter or something like that. Just something, duh, nothing. And I, I don't know what's up. I thought Mercedes, I'm totally disappointed in them. I thought they would be much better than the response and service. And you know what? When I, I got my car back after it was there for like 30 days, the guy goes, I wouldn't drive this back across the desert. I would tell you to get a flatbed to tow it back. I said, okay, I'll call Mercedes. And he goes, then you can take it to uh, Newport. I said, okay. I called Mercedes Benz USA and told them that. And they said, no, nope, we don't do that. Sorry. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just spent a lot of money in anybody's book, a lot of money for this car. And you're telling me, whoop, whoop. That was the that's the service I'm getting from Mercedes-Benz USA and Fletcher Jones, Newport. Thoroughly disappointed. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please help me out and like this video. Then click the subscribe and get notifications buttons so you don't miss any of my latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news.